someone else is speaking next week, whether it's Steve or anyone else. So let's look in Scripture, 1 John 1, 9. There's a lot of things I could say about this passage. 1 John, most scholars believe, was written by the Apostle John, the last living disciple of Jesus of the Twelve. Um, he wrote this mainly to people who believed in Jesus, Jesus' followers. Um, he wrote this because there were some false teachings being spread around, even already at that time in the war, in Christianity. And there were some people who actually didn't like him and were uh, trying to say that he wasn't telling the truth. So he wrote that, wrote these books mainly to the setting and to those people. So as we think about that, we think about our the beginning of the year and fresh starts. So let's look at 1 John 1, 1.9. It's a very familiar passage if you know Scripture or been at church uh, for a while. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sin and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We'll get back to that giant word later. It's very hard to spell and pronounce correctly. So we look at that and we see what God says about sin and confession and as we think about that we it says we confess our sins it says he is faithful we know from scripture other scripture that God does not break his promises and we know even as people who try to tell the truth all the time sometimes there are times where we we can't match our promises and keep those, whether the way we want or at all. And sometimes that's, that weighs on us. And it says God is just to forgive us our sins. And it says if we say we haven't sinned, we make him a liar. And we know God says he can't lie. And we can read scripture and prove that God does not lie. So as we think about what the scripture says, Think about, have you ever felt like you couldn't come back from how far you've gone? I don't know where you're at in your spiritual journey. You may just be checking out Christianity. Um, you may have been a Christian for a long time. Um, you may be kind of in the middle of the road experiencing things. But sometimes we feel like we can't come back from how far we've gone. I remember someone talking about when we've, drifted away from our relationship with with Jesus, uh, that a lot of times it's just basically we've turned around and we started going the other way. And the moment that we realize that we're away from where we should be, maybe circumstances or sin or what have you, when we confess and turn back to God, he's right there. So he hasn't gone way far away from us, even though we feel like we've ran away. He's right there when we turn back to him. Sometimes we feel guilty, uncomfortable, rejected, or judged. Um, I know that there's a big thing uh, these days about bullying and that sort of thing, and we should not feel that way. But sometimes even in our spiritual life, um, we feel like, obviously, if we've done something wrong, we feel guilty. Sometimes it's uncomfortable to admit those things, whether it's to God or others. Um, sometimes we can feel rejected. Sometimes uh, in a church setting, sometimes we feel like if we told someone what was going on in our life that they would reject us or that they would judge us. Um, obviously, because we're human, we can't say that that won't happen. But I know that here at City Hope, we strive to have a non-judgmental place to be because we are all broken. We all have our own things. One of the best things I saw recently was um, don't judge people because you sin differently than them. 
And I think that's very important because sometimes in certain churches becomes categories of things and that's not how God sees them. So wherever you're at today as we begin the new year, whether you feel guilty for something or you feel like God would not forgive you for something you've done or you feel rejected by others or even judged, Jesus offers a fresh start to us today. I was thinking about when we think about being a follower of Jesus and how different that is from every other religion. So many things are are uh, talked about. Well, this is the same. There's all this. But Jesus offers a true, fresh start. And as we looked at the scripture, we start with the confession of that sin, whatever it might be. I don't, I don't need to know what's in you. I just need to know what's in me. And I need to confess that. Um, whether it's a failure of not doing something I should do or a sin, doing something that um, is against God's uh, character or that I know that is against God's standard. Um, confession means to say the same thing that God says, and it doesn't. we don't need to lie about it. He knows what it is, whatever it might be. And he's also consistent in his forgiveness, um, it says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. He's not sometimes forgiving. He's all the time forgiving. So I don't know if you ever needed to be forgiven, but think about how good it felt to be forgiven. Um, I don't know if you, if you are a follower of Jesus, if you remember when you first started doing that and how you felt uh, to be forgiven of whatever you've done in your life and to be able to receive a free gift of salvation. I know for me, um, there are times in in my life where that can get cold and distant because it's been a minute. But whenever I seem to be in that place, I can I can pray and ask Jesus to remind me of what it was like of that day. I mean, it's a long time ago. Um, but he will do that for me. I remember there's times, I, if you know my sister's story, she she believed she was saved, and then in later in life in college, she really accepted Christ. And um, that's not my story. That's her story. They'll let her tell that one day if you hadn't heard it. But for me, when I was eight years old, um, I can remember where I was at, you know, I can see it. I could, I wish I could not see y'all, but if I could remove you, I could picture the church, where it's at, what state it's in, how really small it is, and how tiny it was, and, and I don't know, I've often thought about this. Me and my friend were sitting there about the same time, and uh, both accepted Christ at the same time, but I remember it was winter, and we were sitting on the back row, and they had an old oil heater, the kind that if you didn't put a bucket of water on top of it, it would dry the earth out inside and suck the building in. And and it was super hot that day, and I thought, well, maybe that heater contributed to how I felt. Maybe I thought hell was licking me in the back. <laughs> but that's really not true. But I remember leaving the service uh, not having made any decision. And on the way home, talking to my parents in the car. And uh, if I, I could tell that story so funny, but I won't. Um, anyway, and, and breaking down, and my parents asked me what was wrong. And I told them that, you know, if I died, I'm going to hell. And uh, they, they explained some things more to me. And um, I accepted Christ in the car. And, and I remember the burden that I felt, the relief um, even at that young age, obviously, you know, I had not done that many things that were wrong. And, um, but I remember the relief and I think that's the point, whether you are a child who's not had time to do a lot or may, or you've lived a fairly wicked life away from God, it doesn't matter the degree because he doesn't care. He just forgives those things if you trust him to do so. So, Uh, We fear sometimes that God won't forgive us, but God doesn't base his forgiveness on our circumstances, but on what Jesus did on the cross. 
in the scripture we read, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, it says he's the propitiation. It's a big word. It doesn't just mean payment. He is the payment for our sin because he, he died on the cross. But he's more than that. It means satisfaction. The debt is completely satisfied. There is no way to get it back. So if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, he's forgiven those sins. There's no way for you to get that penalty back. It is gone. And it's gone because Jesus paid it on the cross. And there's no, Jesus doesn't die for us every day. He did it one time. That's all. It satisfied everything. And then uh, God will always forgive us when we ask. And it's an always thing. It's not sometimes, every time we ask, he will forgive us. God is the God of fresh starts. We can, we could think of almost every character in the Bible at some point needed a fresh start in some way. And when they turned for whatever reason, whatever the circumstances, and let God lead them, there was a fresh start. And Jesus uh, offers a fresh start that is thorough. In verse 9, it says, all unrighteousness. So that's everybody. There's not some people, if you do this or you do that, it's available to everybody. And in chapter 2, verse 1, uh, Jesus is also our advocate for life change. So the word in Greek is paraclete. It's kind of like a, basically like a lawyer, someone to stand beside, and a, an advocate, a, an assistant, someone who stands there with us as we would face a judge. So it's interesting. So Jesus pays our debt and then also stands beside us as, as our lawyer saying, hey, I've already done this to, to pay for that, that, uh, that penalty. I've paid for that. And it's not just me. It's everybody who stands there. He, he pays that and comes, stands beside us and says, no, no, judge, I've paid that penalty. There's no need to to uh, pursue anymore. So what if we don't know where to start or what to say when we have something we know we need to confess to God? So interesting enough, the Bible provides us with many options to go to uh, when it comes term to confess to God. But one of the biggest ones that we think of is a prayer that David prayed when he had sinned. And so, um, some of you may know the story, some of you may not, if you've never not been around church, but David, one of the kings of Israel, a uh, historic figure that we know lived and is in the horse, historical record, one of the greatest kings of Israel, um, at one point he sinned by committing adultery with a lady and then uh, having her husband murdered and covering it up. So, it was a big deal. It's not like stealing a piece of candy or... Um, being mad at the people who don't drive right or, you know, saying a word maybe you shouldn't say in front of somebody. But uh, he did something pretty big. And so eventually he got caught. So he, like most of us, sometimes will try to cover those things up. God didn't see that. I don't know why we think God can't see us, but we do. Um, maybe because we can't physically see him. Is, but anyway, so David was under that that impression. So in Psalm 50, we'll read his prayer. Because David was a follower of, wasn't a follower of Jesus like us, but he was a believer in God. He followed God. He prayed to God like we do. It says, um, well, first I have to get to the right chapter. says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgression. So David wasn't saying, do this because this is your M.O., this is the way you are, or because, you know, I know you'll forgive me, so do it that way. He says, no, have mercy because I actually have done something but I do know that you are just, so I can come to you and say, please forgive me. 
Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you would be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. So he says, I know I have done wrong, but you can remove that from me. Do it, even though you're justified in punishing me. Please forgive my sin. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. He's not saying it's my mom's fault. He's saying we were all born in sin because of what Adam and Eve did, and we need your forgiveness to get right. Behold, you delight in truth in in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all the iniquities, all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So, it's we as humans, when someone does us wrong, we remember those things. Most of us can admit, even if we don't get historical in an argument, we still, those things come to our mind, whether we say them or not. They're there. Well, that's just like what he did this time or what she did this time. But God is not like that. So this is something that's hard for us to understand. God doesn't forget things, but he chooses not to remember those once we confess them and he removes them. So back to First John says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So as we think about beginning this new year, maybe we need a fresh start. Maybe there's something going on or the way to begin that is to have a fresh start with God. Now, maybe we aren't in a place where we need to make confession to him. Maybe we're in a place where our life is, the end of the year became pretty smooth and we're moving forward and we want to stay in that place. Whatever the situation is, uh, whether we know where to start or not, um, we have those options. Can you imagine if we all embrace a fresh start today, whatever it might be. Uh, Move forward and continue fellowship with Jesus or become a believer for the first time. Can you imagine how fresh the air and how light the burden feels for everyone who just gives it to Jesus? There's a lot of circumstances we can't control, but he controls everything. So whenever we give those things to him, our burden becomes light, things become fresh and clean. Hopefully we can press forward this year with new fervor to follow him and see him uh, work in us as only he can. Hopefully we can embrace the fresh start that Jesus has for us this year. Right on fall. So As we look back on what we talked about, I don't know if it makes any sense to anybody. I can't never tell. It doesn't always make sense to me what I say. If you need a fresh start this year and you've never become a follower of Jesus, I would ask you to to, uh, take the time to talk to somebody to look into Scripture, uh, to read God's Word and find out what He says. For those of us who are followers of Jesus, I would ask um, that whether you've had a good year or you need a better year, that whatever's in our life, whether it's sin or not doing things we should do or whether we just need to thank him for how things are going, that we would, we would look at each and every day as a fresh start. As we wrap up, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. We're going to pray together, and then we're going to have a time where we can make reflection to the Lord, and then we'll have a time of worship 
as we close. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to be in your house today. We thank you for your word from Scripture. We thank you, um, despite the words that I said, that um, the Scripture we can take and apply to our lives and we can have whatever fresh start we need to have today, whatever it might be. Pray that you would help us if we've come wanting to learn about Christianity a little bit, that you would help us to learn more. I pray for those of us who follow you, say we follow you, that if there's something in our lives that we need to confess to you, not to anyone else, but to you, that you would help us to let go of what it is and give it to you and let you help us have a fresh start in our lives. For those of us who have circumstances that maybe beyond our control that we need to let you have control over and move forward. We pray that you would do that as well. We pray that you would just help us as we're here, that we would focus on you and not on any individual. We pray that you would just help us to grow closer to you, help us to love those around us, help us to not be judgmental people, help us to want to see them come to know you and be more loving. We pray that you would just help us in all we do to honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. So right now, as we begin to sing and play, um, if you have something that you want to talk to God about, you can do that right where you're at. You can use this time as a time of... uh, just giving whatever it is to him. If you want, you can come to the front and kneel. Someone can pray with you if you want. It's just open to whatever the Lord leads you to do as we stand and sing.